You're back. How commendable. Today is going to be good, especially so for me, because we get to do a little bit of number theory. Consider two buckets, one for you and one for your friend, each one containing n balls numbered from 1 to n. You and your friend both reach into your own bucket and grab a ball. Essentially, this means you have both randomly selected a number from 1 to n. What is the probability that your number shares a prime divisor with your friend's number? Prime divisors, what? Let's take a step back so that I can explain what I mean by this. Consider first the sequence of prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on forever. Every positive integer greater than 1 can be uniquely decomposed into a product of prime numbers. This is known as the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. For example, the number 10 is 2 times 5. The number 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. The number 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. The number 17 is, well, 17. It's already a prime and so by definition cannot be reduced further. So basically, prime numbers are the atoms which make up the integers. Except, instead of chemical bonds, we stick our number atoms together with multiplication. So, when you and your friend each get your number from 1 to n, you can each decompose your number into a product of prime numbers and see if you have any primes in common. We want to know the probability that this happens. As usual, let's dip a toe and form an estimate by examining the case n equals 30. Let's consider the first prime number, 2. Every second number is divisible by 2. We can see that there is a one-half chance that you choose a number divisible by 2 and a one-half chance that your friend does as well. So, already, there is at least a one-quarter chance that you both choose a number with a prime factor in common. We can apply the exact same argument with the next prime number, 3. Every third number is divisible by 3. So here, you have a one-third chance of choosing a number that's divisible by 3, and the same goes for your friend. This contributes another one-ninth probability on top of the one-quarter we already had. You can do the same thing for the next prime number, 5. The probability that you and your friend both choose a multiple of 5 is 1 over 25. So far, the probability is 1 quarter plus 1 ninth plus 1 and 25, but in your head, the alarm bells should be sounding. I've added these probabilities together, but they are not mutually exclusive, so anyone post Euler is going to have me for breakfast. Why aren't these probabilities mutually exclusive? Well, for example, there are some numbers out there that are divisible by both 2 and 3, specifically the multiples of 6. Basically, I have counted the multiples of 6 twice. To be precise, I would have to correct for this and remove the multiples of 6. This would mean subtracting away 1 on 36 from my estimate. As this is just a quick attempt, I'm not going to do that now, but I'll have to do it later on. Ignoring this pointy bit for now, we can continue with the next prime, 7. But I won't. Remember, I've actually overcounted a little bit, so I'm going to balance this out by not adding on the remaining terms of the sum, which will all be of the form 1 on p squared, where p is a prime. Doing the arithmetic, it looks like there is about a 40% chance that you and your friend will have a shared prime divisor. It turns out that this is a pretty good estimate for the general case, and we're going to prove it. Let's consider n balls in each bucket, and to make things easy, let's assume that n is super duper large. And now, we reconstruct the argument we gave earlier. For each prime p, there is essentially a 1 on p probability that you choose a number divisible by p, and a 1 on p probability that your friend chooses a number divisible by p. Multiplying these together gives us 1 on p squared then summing these gives us something like this. Of course, there are many more primes, but I want to illustrate the maths using just 2, 3, and 5 for now. Remember, at this point, I have overcounted the numbers that are divisible by 2 and 3, and also the numbers that are divisible by 3 and 5, and the same for 2 and 5. What a mess! I need to correct for this by subtracting these probabilities away. Ah, 
that's better. Except that it's not, because some numbers, like 30, are divisible by all three of these primes. And this means, for example, that we have accounted for 30 three times, and then unaccounted for it three times. So I will need to balance this too. Okay, it looks messy, but it certainly has structure. If we write a for 1 on 2 squared, b for 1 on 3 squared, and c for 1 on 5 squared, then the expression becomes a plus b plus c minus ab minus bc minus ac plus abc. Can you factorise this? Pause the video and have a go. The trick is to throw in a 1 minus 1 at the beginning. Then you can rewrite the expression in this form, and this allows us to factorise as follows. Now, if we uncover a, b, and c, we get this expression, which hints that there is actually another way to do this proof using independent, complementary events. Here's the leap of faith, but you can verify things on your end. If we start including the other primes as well, the structure remains the same, and the product gets bigger and bigger. It turns out that if you include all of the prime numbers in this product, it converges exactly to the value 6 on pi squared. What we have shown, at least to the level of rigour that keeps the production of these videos viable, is that the probability that you and your friend have a shared prime divisor is equal to 1 minus 6 on pi squared, which evaluates to about 0.39, so our estimate was actually pretty good. There are gaps, for sure. We did a lot of hand-waving, especially around the notion of infinity. To construct this proof rigorously, one needs to consider the above product, but only consisting of the primes up to n. Then we need to look at error terms, take limits, etc. Sometimes, life's too short to prove convergence and whatnot. In this case, I think that the soul of the proof is far more enlightening than playing around with the epsilons. Now, it would be nice if we could prove that the product is equal to 6 on pi squared. And I can't help myself, let me roll you in the right direction. Let's call the product a. If I flip everything upside down, it turns out that we can write 1 over a like this. Each of the terms in the product is now of the form 1 over 1 minus x, where x is some number smaller than 1. For such expressions, we can use the well-known Taylor expansion. If we go ahead and do this for each term, then we get this rather long expression. But now, here's the cool part. If you expand all of this out, then by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, you build each square number exactly once, which means that 1 over a is equal to 1, plus 1 on 2 squared, plus 1 on 3 squared, and so on. It's been known for about 300 years that this sum is equal to pi squared on 6. You might know this result as the Barzell problem. It's fairly standard to see a proof of this in a first class on Fourier series. Your turn. This time, there are three of you, each with a bucket of n balls. What is the probability, as n tends to infinity, that you each pick a number such that you all share a prime divisor? Looking forward to reading your solutions. Happy counting! Mm -hmm.